الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا Indeed all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our Lord the gracious, the merciful the master of the earth and the heavens the king of the day of judgment Azza wa Jal and the prayers and the blessings of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and be upon all those who follow on the footsteps of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Nashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah wa nashhadu anna muhammadan abdullahi wa rasooluh wa safiyuhu min khalqihi wa khaliluhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Indeed we bear witness that there is no Lord but the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and indeed, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the Messenger of Allah. I remind myself and remind you to be pious, to remember Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in everything that you do. Ya ayyuha al-ladheena amanu attaqu Allaha haqqa tuqatih wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimoon. O who you believe, fear Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, be God conscious and die in no way except in the way of Islam. Ya ayyuha al-ladheena amanu attaqu Allah wa la tanzur nafsun ma qaddamat li ghadi wa attaqu Allah. Inna Allah khabirun bima ta'maloon. Oh, you believe, be God conscious, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and let every soul be aware of its own tomorrow, and fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for he knows best what you do. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the blessings of those days. Labbayk Allahumma labbayk. Labbayk la sharika laka labbayk. Inna alhamda wa ni'mata laka wal mulk la sharika laka labbayk. This is the call of our brothers and sisters who are, who may be thousands of miles away, but they are closer to our hearts than ourselves. Many of them have been blessed, alhamdulillah, to be there. And many others, inshallah, yearn to be there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us the blessings of being there. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give his mercy and his blessings upon those who have sacrifice their lives trying to fulfill their obligation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like we have heard. But those 10 days are our share. The same way one of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, our brothers and sisters may be there doing the ultimate prize of the day of Arafah and the day of Hajj. But for us, the 10 days is our way to increase our da'at to do everything we can so that we can match up to that wonderful season of getting the ajr and the hasanat from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. مَا مِنْ أَيَّامٍ الْعَمَلُ الصَّالِحُ فِيهِنْ أَحَبُّ إِلَى اللَّهِ مِنْ هَذِهِ الْعَشْرِ أو مِنْ هَذِهِ الْأَيَّامِ الْعَشْرِ There is not a bunch of days in which the good deeds are more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than these ten days of the hijjah that we live in. فَأَكْتِرُ مِنَ التَّهْلِيلِ وَالتَّكْبِيرِ وَالتَّحْمِيلِ La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, wallahi alhamd. These are the days for us to cultivate some of the blessings of this season, where all of the ta'at, all of the pillars of Islam are fulfilled in those 10 days. We do fasting and we do giving, giving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we do our salawat, we proclaim our tawheed. And some of us are doing the pillar of hajj on the same time. So not a place on this planet where the fulfillment of the pillars of Islam, alhamdulillah, are being completed. And I remind myself and remind you to take advantage of those days. And particularly the day of Arafah, which is coming upon us Wednesday. There's not a day in which you have the most best chances for you to be absolved from hellfire than the day of Arafah. What a wonderful gift and what a wonderful occasion. If you fast it, it's like as your sins for the year before and the year after is, are absorbed as long as you stay away from Al-Kaba'ir. So let us, inshallah, get ourselves part of that prize. And let us celebrate and rejoice in this blessing of these 10 days as we, inshallah, embrace the blessing of Eid soon enough. My dear brothers and sisters, too many topics, too many pains, too many issues we need to address, nonetheless. <coughs> and we need to be ready 
and able to address those challenges and own up to those issues that are our own that nobody else will fix for us. We can talk about the gravity of the challenges of our brothers and sisters overseas. And we have something to contribute, no doubt. And we can talk about the challenges, and I will talk to about it in the second khutbah, inshallah, that which plagues the further mosque today and the injustice that beholds it. And we can find ways to change course, inshallah. But then if we look back home here in America, in this season of elections and seasons where bigotry and hatred for Islam has become rampant, a season to bash Islam and Muslims, a young man who is America's best prospect, not America's worst suspect, like my dear brother Mahdi used to say. And the stories are too many to count. And at the heart of it is the demonization of the deen of Islam, the deen of peace, the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that came as a mercy to mankind and that came to liberate man from the chains of this life so that they can connect with the divine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a message of peace and mercy. And so in that challenge, my dear brothers and sisters, it will take us, the Muslim American community, the Muslims in America, to be the ones that redefine the narrative and stand for what this Islam stands for, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intended it, as light and guidance to all of humanity, and as a peace and a message of peace. In doing so, we are, try, we are challenged to define the narrative of Islam in the greater scene. And this is our jihad. And when we talk about jihad, we need to talk about not defining it in the eyes and the terms of others that define it for us. We will not allow self-censorship when it comes to what Islam is about. And what does it stand for? And how do we define Islam both in text as well as in practice as Muslims who uphold the call of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. My dear brothers and sisters, peace is one of the fundamental tenets of Islam. Muslims are shaped by the verses of Al-Quran Al-Kareem and by the practice of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. To understand what this universal message, divine guidance from the Almighty Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, what is it all about? At the heart of it is cultivating the human family, the dignified man, the Adam, on this earth with a mission to bring forth justice and to cultivate peace and harmony and prosperity for the rest of mankind. That's the deen we know. That's the deen that the Quran of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defines. That's the deen that the practice of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam defines. All in its wide interpretations and its specific interpretations. Just a quick rundown of the verses of our deen, of our Quran. Of the calling to peace to become the basis for human practice. And when we say this, my dear brothers and sisters, this is not an apologetic approach about what Islam is. This is about understanding the very tenets of our Islam. Starting from the Imam in the Masjid and ending with the young man in school. Believing it, understanding it, being able to challenge any meaning or any definition that does not do justice to the deen of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah with confidence, with knowledge, with the ability to put it next to any human endeavor. Islam, when it came, it culminated the divine guidance of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala to all of humanity. 
the Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created mankind and gave mankind this guidance throughout time. When the deen of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah started from Adam alayhi salam. When Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brought forth the culmination of that deen in a book that is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in a practice that brought about the completed version of how a human being is to live a dignified life in accordance with the divine of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. From which sprung a civilization of mankind, a civilization that brought forth the best days of humanity, the cultivation of the human mind and spirit and physical ability to transform the world. And that's what these ideas in this deen brought forth and liberated the mind and created civilization and brought people of different religions and different ideas to come together. This is the deen that starts by saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala most high, the Lord of the earths and the heavens is the source of peace, as -salam. One of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Malik Al-Quddus, As-Salam. The ultimate journey for Muslims and for those who believe in La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah is Al-Jannah. And Al-Jannah is Darus Salam. Lahum Darus Salam u'inda Rabbihim. Or Darus Salam u'inda Rabbihim. The greeting of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala to all of those that embrace the job of calling others to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al rusul wa salamun ala al mursaleen the greeting of the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the people of Jannah wal malaikatu yadkhuluna alayhim min kulli bab salamun alaykum bima sabartum fa ni'ma uqba dar this is not a transient thing this is an inherent core of what this deen is about what is the greeting of those who are successful in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the people of Jannah? Da'wahum fiha, subhanakallahum, wa tahiyyatuhum fiha, salam. The greeting of the believers to their beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inna allaha wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-nabi. Ya ayuhal ladina amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. The greeting amongst us as people. فَإِذَا دَخَلْتُمْ بُيُوتًا فَسَلِّمُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِكُمْ تَحِيَّةً مِّنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ مُبَارَكَةً طَيِّبًا This is not just a word we say so that we can convince others. This is a culture. This is a belief. This is a system that is based. The beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he commands his companions, he says, أَيُّ الْإِسْلَامُ خَيْرٌ تُطْعِمُ الطَّعَامُ وَتَقْرَأُ السَّلَامُ عَلَىٰ مَنْ عَرَفْتَ وَعَلَىٰ مَنْ لَمْ تَعْرِفْ a simple advice, say peace to others, those you know and those that you don't know. When he was telling his companions about something to do so that they can enter the paradise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, لا تدخل الجنة حتى تؤمنوا ولا تؤمنوا حتى تحابوا أفلا أدلكم على شيء إن فعلتموه تحاببتم أفشوا السلام بينكم you want to find a path to the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, believe. And if you want to believe, love one another. And if you want to love one another, spread peace amongst you. The deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is based on human interaction. It came to bring forth freedoms and abilities of everybody to think the way they want. It didn't come to prohibit human spirit. It didn't come to succumb human spirit to the chains of this worldly life. When we say La ilaha illallah, we are declaring our freedom. فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُرْ لَا إِكْرَاهَ فِي الدِّينِ قَدْ تَبَيَّنَ الرُّشْدُ مِنَ الْغَيْبِ Then we look at the universal nature of this deen. This message, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ إِنَّا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ مِنْ ذَكَرٍ وَأُنْتَى وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلًا لِتَعَارَفُوا إِنَّا أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says كُلُّكُمْ مِنْ آدَمْ وَآدَمْ مِنْ تُرَاب The origins are all the same. Man is only dignified by his relationship with Allah سبحانه وتعالى لا ينهاكم الله عن الذين لم يقاتلوكم في الدين ولم يخرجوكم من دياركم أن تمروهم وتقصتوا إليهم إن الله يحب المقصتين. A call to reach out and 
join others with righteousness and with justice. وَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى وَلَا تَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْإِثْمِ وَالْعِدْوَانِ Same way to stand for justice. إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة. Allah orders us to be just and to stand for justice. And even when we engage others, قل تعالوا إلى كلمة سواء بيننا وبينه. These fundamentals, my brothers and sisters, define this deen that we have. And somehow, somewhere, that got lost, not only in the circles of those who try to define Islam for us, but within ourselves. Understanding what our deen is, understanding that the basis of our relationship with others is about promoting the, beauty message, the beautiful message of our deen, the peace and the mercy that comes within it. And it requires us, as we remember the season of Hajj, our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from the mountains of Mecca when he was giving his universal messages to his companions he was stressing the importance of peace universal peace peace that is just peace that brings forth the proper interaction of mankind and so my brothers and sisters when we talk let us be firm in understanding our deen and let us use that firmness to redefine the narrative that's being produced. It is high time that we do not accept in any way, shape or form any usage of our deen in linkage with terrorism. There is no such thing as Islamic terrorism. There is no such thing as Islamic extremism. There are terrorists there is terror committed by individuals and by states. And what happens today in Al-Aqsa is another form of terrorism. But there's no such thing as Islamic terrorism. Just as much as there is no such thing as Nazi Christian, Christian Nazism or Catholic fascism. And so when we understand our deen and we inculcate our children with the understanding of what this fundamental divine guidance of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala to all of mankind, not just to us, to all of mankind, to Jim and Jones and everybody else out there. And it's because we did not fulfill our responsibility that there are people who are trying to define it in the lights they do. And so it starts by making sure that we own up the narrative and we correct the meanings that come with it. And we have to bring forth an understanding of our deen that mimics and reflects the very fundamentals of our faith, of the Islam that we know and the Islam that we define, not allow others to define it for us. The other thing that, has, that stems from this challenge is the sense of self-censorship that we have lived in. We look at the word jihad. The minute you touch the word jihad, everybody runs away. And we use in our lexicon the jihadis, as if it's okay to demean our faith with terms that have no meaning, except in the minds of the sick ones that propagate these meanings. And it is high time for us to stand up and own up to those terms. Somebody stands in front of a supposed presidential hopeful. Somebody who's leading the polls today in one of the leading parties. And he would talk freely about getting rid of Muslims. That they are America's biggest problem. And the goal of the candidate not even to rebuke him or stop him because he's transgressing everything foundational about what America is. Not just about what we care before, what we worry about as, as a community or... It is about fundamentally what this country is. And so if we are gonna take the lead in defining who we are, we likewise take the lead in defining what this country stands for. We're proud Americans who understand what America is about. And we understand our deen and we recognize that the values and principles that are embedded in our beloved deen mirror and mimic 
a lot of what the human foundations of this nation is. And we're not gonna allow folks to take us down the path of bigotry and racism and the ostracization of a community and the demonization of a segment just because of our ignorance or because of our lack of understanding. And so just to finalize, when I spoke about, when you understand the concept of jihad and Islam, Islam as a full deen of concepts, jihad is one of the concepts in Islam where the exertion of the effort of the human being in order to glorify and in order to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is done. This is something that we need also to learn so that we can establish the basis upon which we engage this debate. First, no censorship. We define what those terms mean, whether it's in the general public or whether it's in where we teach it and learn it. Second is we understand what it is. Jihad is not kitab. Jihad comes in all kinds of formats, including the ultimate sacrifice for a noble cause, for that which is righteous, not for the transgression against others, not for killing others senselessly, and not to, exp you know, to, to exploit it in any other way. There's no room for us to think of the concepts of qital in America. This is our country. We can die defending it. And we can disagree with its foreign policy the way we are concerned about the well-being of the very society we live in. The senseless killing, the senseless understanding in the minds of many that they have an excuse to commit violence is nonsense. It's against everything that's Islamic. It's against everything that the Quran of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam calls for. And so we're beyond that discussion. We're talking about how do we help define our own concepts in sync with our own understanding of our deen. And while time is not, we don't have the time to go into many of it, but in Islam, the scholars have defined this in so many ways. There are 13 different kinds of jihad that is talked about. The jihad with the soul, the jihad with the mind, the jihad with the heart. We have so many of them. Ibn Taymiyyah radiallahu anhu uh, al-jihad imma yakunu bil qalbi kal azmi alayhi aw bil da'wati ila salam wal islam wa shara'i'i aw bi qamatu al-hujja ala al-batil aw bayanu al-haq wa izalatu al-shubha aw bil ra'i wa al-tadbir fima yanfa'u al-nas aw bil qitali nafsi. We've got so many venues. We need the, the jihad of the word to, to reach out to others. We need the jihad of the heart so that we can take the higher road. And even though our own people are transgressing against our deen, we will not hold back and we will not be spiteful. We will be forgiving. We will open our hearts. We will open our minds. We will reach out to them. And we will use what our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allahumma ghfir li qawmi fa innahum la ya'lamoon. We need people who are able to take the ship towards safety, not by returning back the spite and not by spewing the anger and the, and the hate, but to take on love and to take on patience and to take in righteousness as a way to do it. That's the jihad we need to engage in. The jihad of the intellect to define to the people what we know about Islam, not what they hear and what they spew just because it defines for them the enemy that they want to paint and the superiority of their own faith that they want to exploit. The jihad of the action, let us be the charitable ones, let us be the ones who build schools and hospitals, let us be the ones who change and touch the lives of the people. Because we want the best for our community, our society, not because we want that ship to sink. We can do much more and let us understand our deen so we don't hold ourselves to very narrow meanings. Because in Islam, the whole concept of qital is something that is very limited. It's an instrument to achieve a very limited goal only in the context of what we understand in the international laws and the U.S. has an army, the army does a certain job, so does Muslims throughout time had their issues and in jihad we understand it is 
to fight those who fight you. It is to prevent fitna in the deen. وَقَاتِلُوهُمْ حَتَّى لَا تَكُونُوا فِتْنَةً وَيَكُونُوا الدِّينُ كُلُّهُ لِلَّهِ وَقَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ الَّذِي يُقَاتِلُوا لَكُمْ وَلَا تَعْتَدَوْا وَمَا لَكُمْ لَا تُقَاتِلُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَالْمُسْتَضْعَفِينَ مِنَ الرِّجَالِ وَالْنِسَاءِ وَالْمُدَنِ Very defined issues. They have no context in the American context. But they have a context in the broader understanding of our deen. So that we don't shy away from using the word when we understand what the word defines. And it's important for us to start with that self-confidence and that understanding that allows us to take away the ambivalence and the confusion that exists in these discussions. My dear brothers and sisters, it's a big matter, it's a big challenge. But we take it when we stand by our deen. When we take it when we stand by our country and our people. We take it when we have the compassion and the love that filled the heart of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it is the very message of our deen to reach out and to ensure the guidance to all of mankind around us, including our own, our neighbors, our loved ones, the ones we care about, the ones we deal with every single day. And we need to make sure that that becomes, insha'Allah, the basis upon which we take on the challenge ahead of us, the challenge facing our country, the challenge facing our society. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us and forgive us. Allahumma afu anna wa afu lana wa arhamna. Anta maulana fansurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin. Aqulu qawli hada wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfiru unnahu ghafurullah. الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. My dear respected brothers and sisters, I hope inshallah that we begin to address these issues with clarity. If we don't have clarity and understanding who we are and what we are about and what is our mission in our own home, feel at home and understand that we have so much to do in order to heal the wounds of our country, in order to bind our own wishes and, 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 and views to the greater aspirations of the society at large so that we can all become, inshallah, successful. And to do so with the highest integrity, the highest faith, the highest compassion, and the highest and ultimate patience and, uh, and, preserve, uh, and reserve and strength. This is what is ultimately that's going to, inshallah, going to change the hearts and the minds of the people around us. I don't want this khutbah to pass without reminding one another. And here we are remembering the hujjaj in the, in the, in, in the Masjid al-Haram. Subhanal ladhi asra bi abdihi laylan min al-Masjid al-Harami ila al-Masjid al-Aqsa. Al-ladhi barakna hawla. My dear brothers and sisters, this linkage is not yours or mine. This linkage was not made by me or by a Palestinian or by an Arab, this linkage was made by the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when the Masjid al-Aqsa aches, we ache. And when the Masjid al-Aqsa is subjected to discrimination, bigotry, racism, and injustice, we must be in the forefront of changing it. And my dear brothers and sisters, we all know, we can cry foul all we want, but without concerted, organized strong efforts to undo the senseless support that the incriminators and the causes of injustice in Al-Aqsa are, we will not be able to transform and change. And we know that we as Americans are very capable of redirecting the compass of our nation and fixing the moral decade that exists in our foreign policy when it comes to that region and when it comes to these issues. And so yes, we can pray insha'Allah and it's very powerful and it's very much needed. And yes, we can do everything we know how to support and help those who are there, but we cannot leave the responsibility that befalls us. Because without our role, without our responsibility, nothing else can be done and we can't expect somebody else to do it for us. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to liberate Masjid al-Aqsa and to make it a place insha'Allah of peace and dignity for all. And I remind you that your brothers and sisters in care are having a, fun, a program coming in October. Now everything we talked about my brothers and sisters, this would happen in Texas just recently and, every, and a lot of things that are happening. They are always in the forefront alhamdulillah of doing these activities. 
the young sister who is, mashallah, blessed with the hijab and who's next to Ahmed Muhammad and all of the media events that you saw, is the representative of the care chapter in their city because of the good work they do. And I call you and I ask you to make sure to attend their events, support their causes. My brothers and sisters, this is our issue. This is our fight. You do it because you're a Muslim. You do it because you're a patriot. You, you do it because you're a decent human being. Let us, inshallah, do everything we can to support, inshallah, and pray for everybody else, anybody in calamity, my brothers and sisters who are in the most dire situations in Syria and other places. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all forgiveness and guidance and to give them, inshallah, the peace and, and, the, and the prosperity they deserve in this wonderful season of Al-Hajj and to bring, inshallah, our hujjaz safe and sound. I say this and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our days. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعد والإحسان وإيتاء القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكر الله يذكركم Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in those days so that he may remember you وادعوا يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وقوموا إلى الصلاة يرحمكم الله Quick reminder we have a janazah prayer inshallah we will do it immediately after Jum'ah inshallah أقم الصلاة